Russia faces many challenges in the war in Ukraine. Let's look at seven of them, starting with this. I believe that the counteroffensive is stirring fear among the Russian leadership and that the and of course the soldiers on the front, uh, given the lack of progress that Russia has um, was not able to make in the past few months. Ukraine's preparing for a spring offensive. That will test Russia, not least because it's expended huge resources with little reward, which leads us to the second challenge, territory. The red here shows Russian areas of control in Ukraine. It's much the same as it was six months ago. Russia is struggling for momentum. That stalemate's exacerbated by Russia's third challenge, Western military support. NATO has never been stronger as a result of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. It's basically the exact opposite of what Putin would have wanted. Um, and it's galvanized uh, the West, it's galvanized the US. And that translates to military aid. For example, the UK is now providing long range storm shadow cruise missiles. That means Ukraine can strike targets deep inside Russian held territory. And between December and February, over $33 billion worth of military aid was promised, mostly from the US and Western countries. Western support for Ukraine remains strong. The UK hosted President Zelensky this week. And this support makes Russia's task harder. To respond, it needs manpower. And that's our fourth challenge. It's believed since September, over 300,000 men have been called up. But Russia is losing thousands on the battlefield. This is a recent US assessment. Just since December, we estimate that Russia has suffered more than 100,000 casualties, including over 20,000 killed in action, nearly half of whom were Wagner soldiers, the majority of whom were Russian convicts. The Wagner Group is part of Russia's military, but it's separate from the army. It suffered heavy losses in Bakhmut in eastern Ukraine. Its leader has called that battle a meat grinder. And we know Wagner was recruiting from prisons. According to the UK, Russia's Ministry of Defence is now doing the same. The UK says this is part of a broader, intense effort by the Russian military to bolster its numbers while attempting to avoid implementing new mandatory mobilisation. But while Russia is trying to bolster its numbers, in the short term, many recruits are poorly trained and they need equipment, which is the fifth challenge that Russia faces. Their industry was only really put on a war footing at the back end of last year, so they're currently facing significant shortages of ammunition and equipment. They didn't plan, the Russians didn't plan for a long war. But this is a long war, and supplying the front line is fraught with difficulties, not least because of a sixth challenge, sabotage attacks. Targets include goods trains, and there have been drone attacks too. This map shows a BBC tally of recent targets, including oil facilities, airfields and energy infrastructure, for example, this is an oil depot in Russia-controlled Crimea. On the right, you can see that several oil tanks have been destroyed. These sabotage attacks are one of many pressures on Russia's military leadership, which takes us to our final challenge, internal divisions at the top. The Institute for the Study of War says there have been at least 19 senior military command changes since the war began, and that this has led to an increasingly factionalized Russian military. The most high-profile example being the head of the Wagner Group repeatedly attacking Russia's most senior military leaders. And all of these rifts have consequences. It's the total incoherence inside their command structure. Uh, the result of that, of course, is an incoherent approach to this war. Despite all this, we should emphasize, Russia's military remains far larger than Ukraine's. But as we've seen, Russia does face significant challenges as warm weather arrives and with it, the prospect of a Ukrainian offensive.